I have a lot of pencils. No, I have a lot of pencils. As I'm sure is the case with most hobbies, as I've grown my interest and deepened my understanding, it's just kind of crept into every part of my life. My primary pencil storage is here in the office in this cabinet. The bulk of the collection lives here and I've done some initial organization of these, but it's nowhere near what it should or could be. My current system uses three containers. The nine liter really useful box for storing collections. A simple plain plastic pencil case for sorting different types of pencil and the 0.9 litre box for singles. That isn't to say that I don't have pencils in other places all over my house, like here. Or here. Or here. Or even here. So the title of this video kind of give it away. I'm trying to organize my pencil collection. So, in order to establish a successful system, we gotta lay some ground rules for pencil organization. One, a pencil must be intentionally selected to be part of my collection. This means we don't count free, promotional, or abandoned pencils unless specifically accepted. Two, where possible, brand, type, grade, color, and other notable information should be recorded alongside quantity. 3. Storage location is equally as important as identifying information. It's no good having a list of cool pencils but not knowing where they're all kept. 4. And arguably most important of all, change is okay and perfection is overrated. Be prepared to make, then correct, mistakes. There are a million different ways to approach this problem and 999,000 of them are probably better than this one. But let's get stuck in anyway. Firstly, I'm going to break down the information I think is relevant for pencil collection and curation. There are many different ways of curating collections, but this one is mine. Your mileage may vary. Pencils have a lot in common with one another, but enough that's different for us to build a decent collection of attributes for each one. So here's my initial pass on a list of attributes. Brand, name, grade, country of origin, that's where the brand is from. Country of manufacture, that's where the pencils are actually made, because they're not often the same. Lacquer colour and quantity I own. We've also got to think about some database specific stuff that we'll cover later on, but these will help us track and identify pencils once they're logged in the collection, in the system. These attributes are unique ID number, storage location, storage box, and maybe a barcode, I'm not sure yet. So that's just the first pass. Let's run a few examples to see if we missed anything. This is a Tombow pencil. Its name is Mono 100. It's an HB grade. It originates in Japan and was made in Japan. It's black and I have about six of them left. But that does not cover everything noteworthy about this pencil. We left some important stuff out. The Mono 100 has a plastic end cap with a white line and a gold band. These are distinguishing features, but our current system does not account for them. Back to the drawing board. Now we include end up options and band options. Actually, come to think of it, we didn't talk about ferrules either, or erasers, or imprints. It was a pretty terrible first pass, actually. You might be thinking, why bother with this level of specificity, with this acute level of detail? Yes, we could list brand, name and quantity and be done with it, but that robs us of so much cool functionality later on whenever we build the system. What if we want to cross-reference pencils with gold ferrules with pencils that have erasers? Or what if we wanted blue German pencil without an eraser but a black end dip? Including extra detail lets us do cool things with the data later on, so let's bulk that list of attributes out a little bit more. So here we go, this is a bit more of an expanded attribute list. Brand name, grade, country of origin, country of manufacture, lacquer color, eraser type, eraser color, ferrule shape, ferrule color, banding, imprint color, quantity I own, 
special features. As you can see, the list gets ever more complicated. The problem with categorizing collections is the level of detail at which you stop. We can go all Mandelbrot on this and fractally focus more and more minutely until we're categorizing timber phenotypes to compare against factory postcode. That level of detail is probably too much. Remember rule four, change is okay, perfection is overrated. Be prepared to make then correct mistakes. So let's stick with this current level of detail and if new attributes present, we can add them in later. So we have a working list of attributes for pencils in our collection. Let's jot down some notes on a few test pencils and see if they come out sensibly. Here we go, Blackwing MMX. Brand, Palomino. Name, Blackwing, colloquially known as the MMX. Grade, Soft. Country of origin, USA. Country of manufacture, Japan. Lacquer type, Matte Black. Eraser type, Flat, comma, replaceable. Eraser color, white. Feral shape, black wing. Feral color, gold. Banding, gold band. Quantity I own, I don't know, like four. Imprint color, gold. Special features, black wing feral, horse imprint. And this pencil, which some of you might recognize. Brand, Everhard Faber. Name, Blackwing 602. Grade, medium, it didn't, didn't really have a grade. Country of origin, USA. Country of manufacture, USA. Lacquer color, blue, gray, I guess. Eraser type, flat, comma, replaceable. Eraser color, pink. Feral shape, black wing. Feral color, gold. Banding, black band. Imprint color, gold. Special features, original, comma, vintage, comma, dozed eraser, comma, wood clinched, in inverted commas. Quantity I own, but a single one. This level of detail is enough for us to tell these two pencils apart even without photographs. And it lets us dive down into the detail that we have about them to find similar pencils or pencils that have likewise attributes. So there we go. We have the makings of a database. We have a system that is beginning to conform into some semblance of shape. And we have the start of a database. So what's next? Airtable. Airtable is what's next, but that is for another video.